Holy wow. it's the 4th of July! And what a 4th of July it is for America's 244th birthday. One shrouded in multiple crises that prevents any of us from even watching fireworks in a large gathering. <laughs> Nice job on flattening the curve, guys. Oh. oh well. At least our corporate overlords over at Disney managed to bless us with a full Hamilton musical on Disney Plus. Yeah, Hamilton! You know, one of the greatest musicals within the past decade that has been celebrated all over pop culture due to its incredible soundtrack and diverse cast depicting historical figures of the American Revolution, helmed by Lin Manuel Miranda, who is a literal god in sheep's clothing. A story about America then, told by America now. Yeah, that thing. It's one of my favorite things, like. Ever? Hamilton has also produced one of the most popular fandoms in the musical community. A lot of it is actually fairly impressive, stemming from various covers and well-detailed animations that show compassion for the work. But just like any other fandom, it's filled with some fans who are a little more overly excited than others. Let's talk about the Hamilton Alternative Universe characters, or OCs, or whatever it's called. I mean, hell, we all have OCs. Just look up your own name and put the hedgehog at the end. This is what Larry the Hedgehog looks like, and something about him is quite familiar. Wait, is he an airbender? I want to make one thing clear. Do not go after the creators of these characters. I do not advertise any harassing or bullying in any way. Take this video as a think piece on what I find to truly be bizarre, but not as a personal attack. It's like making an AU of Anne Frank, and you just don't do it. That being said, these artists have moved on and most of this art goes back to circa 2017, so don't get too too twisted about it. I just find it weird to see someone like Thomas Jefferson, who was not exactly a swell guy per se, being displayed as whatever in God's name is this. An art education major who is a furry, taking Japanese lessons. Damn, Thomas Jefferson was a furry before it was cool. Who would have thought? And he's obsessed with anime. He used to be addicted to cocaine, hates to recall his past. I think Thomas Jefferson's past is much worse than narcotics. Pretends to like jazz and classical, but is really K and J-pop trash. The idea that Thomas Jefferson would like K-pop is so incredibly boggling to me, it unplugs my brain from the Wi-Fi router that is reality. I mean, look at Jefferson's binder. I'm not asking for it to be historically accurate. I'm just going to say that it's really bizarre to do this. In this case, Jefferson would have never deemed a god as black. This is based on the actor David Diggs, who's asked on Twitter repeatedly to please stop drawing him as a K-pop stan. Okay, he didn't actually say this, but I'd say at this point, if you're going to make a character based around an actor, why not just make a completely new character that doesn't use the name Thomas Jefferson. To escape from someone you know wouldn't stand for anything that is being said in this image. That's right guys, I don't think the actual Jefferson would have been a huge anime fan. Maybe it's done to perhaps bastardize who the actual Thomas Jefferson was. Similar to how in the musical The Producers, they made an incredibly flamboyant mockery of a leader who has been deemed as one of the most evil men in history, to not give them what they would have wanted. I'll myself raise your hand. There's no greater dictator in the land. Making them a joke is able to belittle them as an individual while also being honest to who they were. I believe the film Jojo Rabbit does this fairly well when tackling this guy. But now they call me a scared rabbit. Let them say whatever they want. People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, look at that psycho. He's gonna get us all killed. God, I love that movie. However, any hint of irony on said image is removed when Hatsune Miku is displayed prominently on Jefferson's binder. This seems somehow serious. Wow, Miku and Thomas Jefferson. Certainly not a combination I ever would have thought of, but here we are. Moving on, let's take a look at Philip Hamilton who works part-time at Starbucks and goes by the quirky nickname Philly Cheese. Plays violin, piano, and formerly saxophone. Oh, so they're a band kid. You know, instead of being an open furry like Thomas, Philip is closeted, really providing some interesting personality to this kid by saying he uses Nya unironically. But I have to hand it to them, she does remind me of those band kids. You know, those. What's going on, Julia? It is Wednesday, my dudes. So, what'd you get for lunch? Cookies again? Epic bra moment. I got freaking vegetables again. Big oof. Well, maybe after we're done eating, we could play some Smash Bros on your Nintendo Switch. 
For a lot of these drawings, I don't know if they're shipping the characters or the cast members. And look, I realize that Hamilton itself is an AU in a sense, but it's crafted on the essence of the autobiography it was based upon. It's used for context for the musical and transitions Hamilton's life as an individual, and escalates it into a piece that is both informative and entertaining. This is nothing new in the realm of media. It's when these historical figures are transformed into something that doesn't even represent them at all, in an unironic sense that doesn't come across as a spoof when it becomes weird. It's not the worst thing in the world, virtually it's harmless, just questionable. I mean, here's a drawing of Thomas Jefferson as Bowser Koopa. Uh, why? If your art was presented in this video and you weren't credited and you'd like to be, notify me in the comments and I'll get right to you. Once again, no hidden regards to you as an individual, just making a short video for fun. Finally, I want to get to the final grand image of the video. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Hamilton himself. Damn, Hamilton looks like the child of both Danny Avedan and Aaron Hansen. A reason why I'm making this video is to try and prevent others from drawing depictions of figures such as Jefferson as an AU. With the release of the Hamilton musical on Disney+, Plus, it's almost assured a new generation of individuals are trying to depict someone like King George as a trendy zoomer. Let me just say you won't get a good reaction if you decide to do so. We've come to a point within our shared history where we should look back upon historical figures as what they were. Hamilton is well appreciated for its entertaining portrayal of these figures, but it should not replace the truth of what all these people were. They should continue to be studied for all their victories and all their faults. The conversation should not stop. Nor should it be erased, for better or for worse. It's much more complicated than what a musical suggests. It's very fascinating actually, as Hamilton was released during the final years of the Obama presidency, a time that is much different than today with a surge of cancel culture. It is the realization that the real life Hamilton did not advocate for the abolition of slavery, like the musical would suggest, but rather manumission, that is, the voluntary release of slaves. Not exactly as noble as what Lin Manuel puts it out to be. Not only that, but Hamilton was also described as an elitist and believe that presidents should serve for life as an elected monarch. Something that would not fly upon modern Western society today. Depicting the Founding Fathers will increasingly get more tricky as people become more critical about them. The musical is a very loose interpretation of the events and essentially a fanfiction in itself. Its attempt of historical documentation should not be taken as a source to go to when it comes to the Founding Fathers and the Revolution. And I don't think Lin-Manuel created it to be that way. For me it's supposed to vision the ideals of the United States and the entire spirit of America. The tagline, America Then, Told by America Now is literal. A diverse cast describing the events of old white men. I mean, it's a damn hip-hop musical. I think if people come away from the play with a romanticized view of the Founding Fathers, it's more of the thought of the individual themselves and not entirely of the musical itself. That's why this 4th of July feels different from all the other ones I've lived through. In recent years, I've taken a more critical eye when it comes to interpreting American history. I don't hate America unlike other people you may know, but I admit it has many flaws. Major ones at that. I really want it to succeed. Its flaws as a nation have been exhibited time and time again, but I do believe over time we do make progress as a population. I hope you guys have a great 4th of July and stay safe out there. Or if you're watching this after the 4th of July, I hope you all had a fantastic one. It's now officially been four years since my first video on this channel. And man does it feel odd. I'm thankful for all those who have gone along with me in this ride. And I hope you continue to support me in the future. You help me grow as an individual. That being said, dude the Hamilton musical was so good. After years, we finally got a high quality feature film over this entire thing. Seen nonstop, one of the best act one finales in the history of Broadway? Holy shit, dude. Watching the Philip Dine scene? God, it's so chilling. Washington's farewell song is so touching, and I love the way they intertwine his farewell address within it. The cast is so good. It, it's a shame I'll probably never see the original cast perform, but I at least got to see this recording. I really need to remake this old video of mine because I don't think it does the show justice. I can't wait for what this dude works on next, which is apparently going to be a Disney. Disney movie. It's going to be great. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy 4th, guys. Alright, hey guys, how's it going? This video was supposed to be uploaded on July 4th, but unfortunately, literally the day before, YouTube striked my channel for a video that had been uploaded three years ago, and that I had forgotten was in the backlog of my channel. You see, back in the day, I would render videos for a friend who was unable to do so due to their computer's lack of ability. I would upload these said videos unlisted on my channel, which no one saw except for that one person. But eventually, it bit me in the ass by striking me, thus making it so I was unable to upload for the next week. What terrible timing. I then tried to appeal to YouTube explaining the situation, but they denied it 
it without even saying another word to me. Then the very next day, prominent YouTuber Quentin Reviews announced he was making a video virtually on the exact same topic as mine. And I have no problem with Quentin, but my god, I don't want it to seem as if I took his idea in any way, because this video has been ready to be uploaded for at least a week now. The whole thing has just been incredibly upsetting and has really bummed me out, but at least the video is out. I hope you guys had a great 4th, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.